Hello guys, I've created a 3D version of the game of life. If you want to know what that's all about and how you can participate, I will let you know in the next few minutes. Let me first explain what the game of life is. If you look at nature, you will see that entropy usually always increases. Like for example, this um, sand castle that slowly turns into a random pile of sand. But you will never see the opposite happening. That out of a pile of sand, spontaneously, a sand castle arises. But if you look at uh, our human beings, we consist of a very structured um, atoms that were first just randomly spread and then uh, built our life consisting of DNAs consisting of more than 200 billion atoms very structured to create a heart and all the organs of our bodies so this guy uh, John Conway he was a mathematician and he found out that using a few simple rules you can create very complex structures with mathematics and these rules are as follows if you take uh, a matrix of um, uh, y and uh, x axis and you have squares on that matrix for example this square you apply a rule to this square that you look around the neighboring squares you count the amount of them and if there are less than uh, two then this um, cell this square will die out also if there are uh, more than um, four neighboring squares that um, cell will also die out you can compare that a little bit to molecules if a molecule can bond very easily like oxygen it will bond to just anything and it will never uh, form itself very complex structure and also when you have something like an, uh, that has already fully bonded like uh, inert gases they will also never um, create complex molecules but something in between like for example carbon they have a lot of um, free spaces to form a lot of different connections and that's where the life uh, can appear so in uh, this uh, mathematical um, model when you have uh, more than uh, two uh, neighboring cells and less than four then this uh, cell stays alive and if the number is exactly three three neighboring cells then even if this is uh, a non-living cell life will start there so that's the rules that are there so once again uh, less than two means death for this cell and more than uh, four four or more means also death and otherwise it stays alive and for every uh, square if there is three neighboring squares at a certain point that square will get to life so if you follow those rules you can see some very interesting things happening over here you can see what happens when you apply the rules of uh, Conrad's game of life to some cells when starting with very basic structures you'll see that uh, other structures start to appear and finally on a larger scale very complex structures start to um, appear let me fast forward this video a little bit to give you an impression you can see here really interesting patterns you can even create a digital clock out of uh, the game of life like you see over here you 
you take a closer look at that digital clock you can see that it's all cells that apply the rules of the game of life so but now it's 2023 and uh, we can try to make this game in 3d because we have much power more powerful computers and we have unity of course so let's get started if you create a 3d version of the game of life you will notice that um, each cell has 26 neighboring cells this is much more than in a two-dimensional version and this has some consequences a three-dimensional calculation costs a lot more resources than a two-dimensional calculation if you take for example a grid of 1000 squares in um, a two-dimensional world this would mean uh, uh, one million different positions but in a three-dimensional world it would already mean one billion different positions this is quite a lot to take for uh, even uh, today's computers so we need to take performance into account when uh, creating an application for the game of life in 3d john conway already took a lot of time to find uh, the proper uh, rules for the two-dimensional version of the game of life because if you create too many cells soon uh, everything will be filled with cells and if you create not enough soon everything will die out so you need to have a careful balance between uh, cells that are being created and cells that are going to be uh, removed so uh, for the my version i've um, done some uh, some analysis and i've run a lot of different configurations you can see here this is the configuration part and this is the result part and um, in some uh, configurations you see that uh, there is a very high result this means that um, the the cells stayed alive very long but 500 is actually the limit that i set this usually means that uh, we are ending up in some um, loop where we are just oscillating between two different configurations and that's also not so interesting so actually the best um, uh, configurations are these ones the ones with the high number but not the number 500 so uh, when I ran a lot of these um, tests I found out that actually it doesn't matter that much which configuration you use in a three-dimensional version it's different than a two-dimensional version um, so I decided that you can uh, configure this part yourself there will be a default configuration that works quite well but you can change it to anything you like okay so finally let's take a look at the application over here you see a floor that's just for reference and uh, there's also a sky over here everything in between can be filled with cells if we move to the position of the cursor it's over here you can use the space bar to to create some cells and then you can use the arrow keys to move the cursor around and create even more cells in different uh, directions you can also uh, remove an existing cell by clicking on spacebar once again um, over here in the help you can see all the keys that you can use in the game so you can also set the life conditions which I already told about um, any configuration usually works but maybe there is some special kind of configuration that will uh, give some really nice effects I'm not sure about that yet so this is lower limit for the dead so anything below uh, eight cells will die out and uh, anything uh, above uh, 17 cells also will die out so that's the current uh, configuration so if we now run this um, let me try to keep uh, the, the cells in the, in the picture so we can uh, run one step 
and you see that everything already dies out because this configuration is not uh, enough to uh, keep cells alive we need more cells and therefore we can create uh, random blocks you can create a big block if you like and now uh, we have a lot of more um, cells already here so if we run it again and we run it step by step with this button you can see that uh, some cells are dying but you also see green cells that cells are being created we can now use the play button to uh, continue to do this uh, simulation and we can even speed it up and then you see that uh, there is a lot of activity here and uh, the configuration changes everything and finally uh, it dies out and the life has ended we have now uh, used uh, 400 steps so that's quite a lot but uh, I have uh, configurations where things stay alive much longer but the challenge is to keep things alive as long as possible and also to find interesting things like uh, moving objects if you take a look at the original game of life the 2d version you can see that you have uh, different types of uh, objects some objects just are just stable they stay like this that's like what we have created just yet and uh, some are oscillating just um, switching between different configurations eternally and there are also moving objects this is one thing i haven't achieved yet with uh, the 3d version uh, it's going to be difficult if you look at this glider you see that it's moving but it's moving because there's a slight imbalance between the left and the right side and that's here is one cell created then there is one cell created and so on and on the back the cells are removed that makes it move but in a three-dimensional world that's more difficult because you have three directions so maybe we need to come up with even different rules than the ones that we have now where we're just counting the neighboring cells to see if a cell should be alive or not back to the application you can also spawn random uh, structures by pressing this button you will see now that some random structures start to appear and you can then run the uh, the simulation on them depending on how much uh, processing power you have this might be a bit uh, jerky uh, another option that we have is to load and save configurations if you find an interesting configuration you can also press this button then it will start to find configurations itself you will see this uh, number uh, countdown and uh, now the system is trying to find interesting configurations that means where um, you create some cells and they stay alive for very long the um, configuration that it finds are saved on uh, your CTMP drive so over here I have some configurations that the program found for me um, this is the uh, con uh, the life conditions and this is the uh, starting amount of cells this is the amount it created and this is the amount it deleted and finally this number is uh, important it's the, the um, amount of steps the simulation stayed alive so this um, configuration stayed alive for the maximum of 10,000 steps so we can load it and let's see what happens so this is this configuration that will stay alive very long it could be that it ends up in a loop in an oscillator but let's check it out let's run it and we can see that there's a lot of uh, cells being created the green ones and deleted the red ones if you take a look at the top you see that um, the cells that are turning green and red are uh, always uh, different cells so that means we're not in a loop or anything 
you'll notice that uh, these structures usually take this uh, shape because any cells that are outside of this shape they just die out because they don't have enough neighbors so uh, with these configurations these rules that I created you always end up with a, a similar structure like this maybe bigger or smaller than this one but uh, always a little bit shaped like uh, yeah, some kind of a rounded uh, square let's say and this structure really stays alive for a very long time maybe even forever and you can see for example in this uh, corner where the mouse is now that this uh, cell changes from existing to non-existing but not in a very regular pattern so if there is uh, some sort of repeating structure in here it's uh, at least a very complicated repeating structure it's not just like uh, four or five um, things that it runs through but it runs through a lot of frames and then maybe it um, repeats from the start again but it looks very alive this structure so even after uh, 10,000 steps it's still alive over here I have a very interesting structure that stays alive for a very long time but then finally it uh, goes into uh, some sort of an oscillating mode where there is only very small activity and it oscillates between just a few configurations I fast forwarded this video a little bit so you can see how this is happening So if you would like to experiment with this uh, game of life yourself, you can download it from my itch.io account. You can find the link in the description. And then you can try for yourself to find really interesting structures. And I am anxious to hear about what you found. And maybe you have some suggestions for the uh, program or some uh, better rules that we can use to create an even more interesting game of life in 3D. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.